We're bringing out the fancy clothes today. <laughs> How you doing? Hey everyone, Dan and Leslie, welcome back to another Disney Dining Review. I'm not sure that we would call um, my tank top fancy clothes, but I do have on a skirt. You've got a dress. <laughs> I got a collar. We are headed to a restaurant that I've always been intrigued by, but we've never taken the time to go to, um, which is Tiffin's at Animal Kingdom. Would you like some Tiffin's, kitten? I bet she would. We have been to Nomad Lounge a ton. It's one of our favorite spots in Animal Kingdom, and it is the lounge that is attached to Tiffin's. And I think that's probably why we haven't been to Tiffin's, because oh. we love Nomad Lounge so much that whenever it comes down to, oh, should we try Tiffin's? We're like, Meh. Let's just go to Nomad. We'll grab some drinks in the bread service. If you can't get into Tiffin's and you really want to, go to Nomad Lounge, walk up. They open at 11, I think, most days. You can just mm -hmm. walk up uh, right before then, get on the wait list. Or if you're right there when they open, maybe you can get right in. The wait list, we've never waited longer than like about 45 minutes. Yeah. Um, so it's usually pretty quick to get in. This is a very unique dining experience. Um, whenever the dining plan was in play, it is considered a signature dining experience. And so it would take two dining credits. Um, and it's it's a little fancy. I think the lunch and dinner, I looked at both menus and they look pretty identical. Yeah. Uh, we're going for lunch today, but still, I think we'll probably do one appetizer, one entree, one dessert again. I think we'll probably split all of those and we'll just get whatever they recommend. Also the drinks, the drinks are uh, very similar. A lot of the same drinks, maybe all the same drinks. I didn't compare them all yeah. to Nomad yeah. Lounge. Um, but yeah, I'm excited about this. It's very, very different food. So you've got like a sustainable fish, which I believe comes out with its head on. Which. It, oddly enough, I kind of hope they, they recommend that. <laughs> um, I bet we could bring the head back for princess here. <laughs> Let's not. That would be gross. Um, but the, the appetizers are unique too. So, I mean, you have anything from like a pork belly to a falafel to some interesting looking salad that they I'm not sure a, about. They have a bread service there. They do, which I think is the same as the bread service that we get whenever we go to Nomad. It is it is worldly. Oh, oh here we go. African, Asian, Latin, and fine dining. I feel like that's worldly. It's worldly. <laughs> they also have a charred octopus on the appetizer <laughs> menu. Um, and then you can do like a, a duo that has the falafels and the octopus. I don't know. I'm not exactly sure what I want them to recommend because no, I'm intrigued sounds, by so many things. It all sounds interesting, good, different. Yes. So, All of those things. I'm also not completely opposed to getting two appetizers or two desserts if they like highly recommend oh, yeah. two, but I think for sure just one entree because I don't want to be completely stuffed. Let's just know. see what they recommend. Are you ready? Yeah. Let's do it. No better way to start your Animal Kingdom day than to run into Divine. And we are like two for two the last two times we've come. Divine comes out, she's on stilts, covered in vines, green face paint, and she's just glorious. history lesson on the word Tiffins and it's the stackable lunch boxes that um, Joe Rody and all of the Imagineers that were traveling around that they um, saw people using with like their lunches and so if you've ever gotten like the bread service over at Nomad Lounge it's served that way where there's like sauces in one and bread in the other and that's that was the people that they saw traveling in these areas or the, the locals 
that's how they used traveled with their lunches. They said they had three main dining rooms, all with different themes. So this one is themed to conservation. So it's got a lot of animals around. They've it's got one beautiful. themed. Beautiful. They got one themed to Asia, um, and then another themed Africa. The Africa. Africa. You got the High Tower Rocks mm -hmm. for a specialty cocktail. She said that was her favorite. It has tequila and watermelon in it. Yeah, I'm excited about that. I got the Tempting Tigress, which she said was more old fashioned y. Uh, mm -hmm. It does have bourbon in it, so it's definitely I mean, up your alley. I'm, up your I'm alley. sold if you say old fashioned. <laughs> so look, it's so pretty. Um, it has a little piece of watermelon in it. That's good. Oh, it's got um, a little tartness to it. It's not yeah. like a real like candy watermelon flavor. It's it's very, very good. So, uh, very refreshing. Tempting Tigress. It's definitely not an old-fashioned, but I can see the correlation there. Okay. So you can definitely taste the bourbon, and um, there's a spice in there. What is that? Allspice drum. Mm. Allspice. It tastes um, very holiday-ish, yeah, almost. Yeah, a little bit. Like, I mean, that allspice. Yeah. Back off. <laughs> we got the bread service, which came out immediately, and they also got the pork belly, which is a 50th anniversary appetizer. So that one hasn't come out yet. How is so, this one? Oh, it's wonderful. It has a red pepper hummus a spicy coriander yogurt, and a ginger pear chutney. And then it comes with different types of um, like bread that you can eat it with. Do the hummus first, which I already know I love. And I'm doing the um, chutney on the little loaf bread. The bread is warm, very fresh. The red pepper hummus is just well done. I mean, there's nothing like super special about it, but it's just simple, easy, well done. The pear chutney is almost like a jam. It's just pretty sweet. Um, and it goes really well with whatever loaf this loaf bread is. Look at the teeny tiny little egg. All right, so we got the pork belly, which um, she said was modeled after Walt's favorite dish, um, which apparently was Spam and eggs. Should we try it? Yes. You know how when you um, get pork belly, usually like it's, it's like you have to gnaw it's through like it. bacon almost. <laughs> it's like really chewy. This is like the most tender, pork belly I've ever had it. And it's got a really um, interesting spice to it that just hit me that I, I didn't notice until just then. It's also got a good sear to it. And so mm -hmm. you're not just eating fat, <laughs> which is also something that I don't like with pork belly. <laughs> so our fish has been delivered. I can legit have a conversation with my fish. How you doing? <laughs> Actually, this, it looks really good. It looks really good. I'm a, pretty excited. It's a flash fried fish with um, a forbidden rice underneath. And then like a peanut sauce. Mm, I'm actually pretty excited about this. I'm excited. It's much more um, tender than you would expect. Wow, that's good. Very hot. Yeah, with that peanut sauce, it's so good. The rice is actually super flavorful. Mm -hmm. The fish is very tender and hot. It is flash fried. And it tastes kind of like catfish, honestly. Yeah, it does. Like fried catfish. Yeah. So we got the lemon meringue pie, which is not exactly what I was expecting. More like a deconstructed thing, but it looks good. Very fancy. She said there's like a lemon meringue and it's on a graham down here. There's like a little graham cracker thing. There's like marshmallow fluff and some lemon sponge and some lemon basil. It's very lemony. <laughs> it's more dense than an actual lemon meringue pie. Mm. It's good, but it's been my least favorite thing that we've had today. Like, I don't know that I would get dessert again. Yeah. All right, so good. Not my favorite thing on the table, but good. Um, I think we're done. Yeah, so we'll review back home. All right, we are back. That was fantastic. Oh my gosh, I don't know how we have not had that until now. I do, because Nomad Lounge, you can get the same drinks yeah. and you can get that bread service. You can't get the big meals or anything yeah. like that. If you're looking for help on your next magical vacation, whether it's to Disney, Universal, cruises, or all-inclusive resorts, please reach out to us over at fantasticalvacations.com. You can fill out our quote request or you can uh, peruse through all of our fantastical team of agents and find one that suits you. It is completely free to you. We do not charge fees and we can impart all of our experiences trying these different uh, resorts along the way. Absolutely. Okay, so ambiance and theming, I'm it was incredible. So we talked kind of talked about it um, at the restaurant, but they they gave us like a whole history lesson as we were walking in. They um, they have the three separate rooms that are themed like excessively. She even went into talking about different dishes and why they made those dishes. And so I'm gonna say five. 
Like it was really well done. It really was. It was very, very well done. It was the best theming. I mean, it, it beat Jiko, honestly. I think it was a five, yeah. hands down. Everyone had the stories. Other waiters and waitresses like taking people to different rooms, everything on the wall. I mean, it's just, it's phenomenal. They even gave us a little um, sketch drawing that Joe Rody did and she said that there's like 15 of them and so you can get a different one every time you come in. And, um, and so we got a little, um, uh, dinosaur. All right, service. Um, it was definitely above average. Our waitress, I mean, everything from the lady, the stewardess, I guess, that set us, um, telling us about like the different, um, like what Tiffin's means, those, those three little stacking, whatever. The lunchbox. Then like our waitress again, very, very good. The food, overall came out very, very quickly and very nice. Yeah. She cleaned off our table between every meal. Um, she was very informative and helpful. She gave us new silverware between every yeah. thing too. And that's, I like that so much. Like yeah. all restaurants should do that. Overall, our service was really, really good. Definitely above our average. I would say a four. Yeah, I would agree. Let's talk about those drinks. Mm. So the drinks were fantastic. Her recommendations were spot on. Um, I love that you can also get these drinks over at Nomad um, because Tiffin's is a little bit pricier. It is a signature meal. So, um, you know, if you just really want like a good quality drink, a nice beverage, you can go over to Nomad and get the same things. So um, both of them were really just fantastic. They have a fantastic wine list mm. um, and you can see the wines and the coolers when you walk in. They have uh, beer flights and some different pretty cool selections of beers. I would say a four. I mean, it's definitely above average. They were they were very good. Yep. And last but not least the is food. the food. Our appetizers were out of this world. Like they were just so good. Uh, we actually were talking before the app, the entree came and we were like, we think food's gonna be a five, like if it keeps up this pace. And then the fish came, such an interesting presentation, <laughs> right? With the fish uh, and it was really nice and flaky. I really liked the rice that it was on and the little peanut sauce and the slaw. Um, but the fish itself, if you just had a bite of that, it was kind of flavorless, like it, yeah. it, it was just fish. So it needed yeah. a little seasoning, but I don't know how you would do that. Well. Yeah, because it's a whole fish with the skin on fried. And then as you're kind of cutting into it, like the skin is all one piece. So it like flakes off. So if there was seasoning on the skin, it didn't get on the meat. So I think that's why it was. Yeah. But you, you really need to take it with bites of everything else around it. The dessert, I was a little disappointed with. Mm -hmm. She suggested yeah. the lemon meringue pie which is what it said on the menu. And I was expecting like an actual slice of lemon meringue pie, but it turned out to be like a deconstructed nod to lemon meringue <laughs> pie. So I was a little disappointed in the presentation because while it was pretty, it was not like what I was picturing as a lemon, yeah. that was not lemon meringue pie. It was not lemon meringue pie. Yeah. It was good, but it was really strong lemon. Like even, yeah. even more so than, you know, usually with a meringue, you kind of get the cut of the tartness with, with the meringue part, right? right. But the meringue in this case were those little, um, Base ice cream type thing. <laughs> like the little dried Hard. versions, you know? Overall, we gave this a four for food, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I definitely think there were some very interesting things on the menu that were probably phenomenal as well um, that were plant-based and um, could very well cater to other dietary needs. And so um, it would be definitely be a good option for people that might not you know, want a big slab of meat. I think overall, if you add all that up together, overall score is 4.25 out of five. It is a phenomenal option. Yes. And bonus, not that I want to go back and compare everything to Space 220, <laughs> but it was $20 cheaper than our meal at Space 220. Score. And it was a way better experience. Oh, and that's with, um, I had a beer after that drink. So we oh, got yeah. all that food, the two drinks, plus I had a beer and that includes that. They did give us a 10% discount for being DVC members. Highly, highly recommend. Absolutely. <laughs> I can't remember where next week takes us, but join us. Uh, if you like these dining review videos, please like and subscribe so that you don't miss the next one. And we will see you on the next video.